Hello and welcome to SLE here in Nashville, Tennessee. Today we're doing the instructional video for this eight and a half by 24 foot long with eight foot porch concession trailer. It's charcoal gray with silver trim. The first thing we're gonna go over today is the power supply. So you can see our cord running out. We are hooked up to short power today. Uh, you can see this trailer does come equipped with the gen generator platform on it. So whether you're running with the generator or short power, first thing you want to do is make sure that your power supply is turned off. All right. Once you've ensured that, go ahead and insert your cord here, power cord here. Uh, there is a notch on here. You'll line that notch up and then it is a twist lock. So you'll twist to the right. And then once you've done that, turn this collar, that'll tighten it up there so it'll stay good and fit or nice and snug and stay in place while you're using the power supply. Take the other end of your cord, hook it into your 50 amp plug, and you are ready to go at that point. All right, we're gonna take a tour around the trailer here. So first we're gonna start with this 36 by 36 access door and the V nose, show you what's in behind here. Right there at the front, there's a grease trap. Behind that is the 30 gallon freshwater tank. Over here in the corner, is the water pump we'll go over those water lines there here in just a minute back here but on the other side of the water tank there is a mop sink and then back in the corner back there that is the water heater here on the wall you can see the electric panel that black box next to the electric panel is the inverter so that anytime you're hooked to power supply the inverter will be charging the 12 volt battery there in the floor And there's the power cord for this unit. All right. This here is the speed crank for the stabilization jacks. And then we're going to go over these water lines right quick. So this line here coming out of the freshwater tank, that is the main supply line. As you can see, the valve here is in line with that water line. That means that valve is open. Okay. This valve here, not in line. It is closed. This is the blowout line. Simply connect an air fitting here, blow it out, whether it's for winterization purposes or you know, just any other reason that you may want to blow out the lines. Uh, the winterization video will, you will get separate and it'll walk you through the procedures for winterizing it. This line here, as you can see, it goes through the floor and drains out through the bottom. This is the drain for the main water tank here. So again, closed, turn that, open it. It'll drain the contents of the water, fresh water tank. All right. I'll move on around. Here's the water access panel. Simply unlock it. If you're filling up the fresh water tank and be running with it, unscrew this cap, insert your hose here, uh, fill it up. Once you've done, remove your hose, replace your cap, pretty simple operation there and then this fitting here this is for the pressurized system typical garden hose fitting there it does have a screen filter on it so when you connect the pressurized system here you bypass the freshwater tank so water goes directly to the water pump and to the water heater all right and I will put this key back around the faucet inside on the front corner here, you can see one of the four stabilization jacks on this unit. All four corners have one. So that speed crank is used to raise and lower the stabilization jack there. Or you can, if you prefer, you can use an impact with a three quarter inch socket and that'll get it done quicker, more efficient if you wanna go that route. One thing to note with the stabilization jacks, they are exactly that, just for stabilizing the unit. So any leveling needs to be done with the jack on the front nose of the, or tongue on the unit and with the tires by putting boards or blocks underneath, things of that sort to stabilize the unit or to level the unit. These jacks just simply will not support the weight of this unit. So please do not use them to try to level the unit they're simply to keep it from rocking side to side and such. All right. Next thing we're going to go over here is the waste tank drain. 
So this does, unit does come equipped with a 50 gallon waste tank. So to operate this drain, you can use a water hose here, or you can remove this three inch cap and hook up a three inch hose there. You can get the three inch hose from any RV camping supply store. Uh, once you've hooked up your tank, or hooked up your hose to the tank, or to the drain, just pull this valve out. That'll drain the contents, and then once completed, push this back in, detach your hose, stow it away, replace your cap. All right. Coming on around the unit here, we have two 7,000 pound axles with the mag wheels on the unit. Quick note on these, and behind this cap here that says Taskmaster, on it there's a grease fitting in there. There is one on each tire. So once every 10,000 miles to one year, you'll need to remove that cap, take your grease gun and connect to the grease fitting and just lube the uh, bearings and hubs so they stay in proper working condition, all right? This is our tank, propane tank that we'll be using for purposes of demonstrating the gas system on this unit. You can see on the back of the unit there are two 100 pound tanks inside the cages there. So those 100 pound tanks do come empty and we'll go over that here in a few minutes when we go over the rest of the gas system. All right, here's a look at the eight foot porch from the rear. This rear rail is removable. Simply grab your handle, pull out, do that on all four, two on each side, and then you can lift the rail and remove it. So here's the other two. And then the license plate holder down at the bottom here on the porch you'll also notice there are four d-rings two on each side there and there and then next to the door there that white box that is a power outlet and then we have the 36 inch by 78 inch rv style door with window in the center there and that does have a screen on the inside of it as well. There are two LED lights on the porch. It does also have a side entry door on the porch here. Again, same operation as the rail on the back to open and shut that. All right, we'll move on around the trailer. Look down the side here. Oh, stabilization jack here on this corner. There's one on the driver's side as well. Again, behind the Taskmaster center cap there, the grease fittings on both of these wheels as well. And then here we have the four foot concession window on this unit with pop up or flip up counter top. You do see the two LED lights, one on either side of the concession window as well. So real quick, to lower this flip up counter, simply come to press one tab. Kind of gently rest your arm against the, pop, the flip up counter there while you depress the second tab and then lower the counter down. I'm using one hand, so I have to use my arm to rest against it there, but very simple operation just to demonstrate how easy it can be done just utilizing one arm. And now we're back at the front. So let's talk about the gas system on this. The gas system on this unit is the most dangerous system on the unit. Uh, real quick, I will note, there's the fourth stabilization jack. Uh, the gas system is the most dangerous system on the unit because you are dealing with propane gas. So there are a few steps that must be taken every single time you're operating this unit before turning on the gas, all right? So step one, simply open up this concession window here. So 
open that window up and then at that point we'll go inside the unit to continue going through the steps here we just want to make sure that everybody is safe when using this gas system all right so step one we've opened the concession window step two is come inside here and we're going to turn on this vent hood all right so we're going to do that by flipping these two switches into the on position as you can see they already are I do have all the appliances, all the pilots on the appliances lit already. So I have the exhaust hood running. These first two lights that you see here on the exhaust hood, they turn on with it's, uh, the first exhaust fan that is on this switch. And then the third light down here at the end, it turns on with the second exhaust fan on that second switch there, the one to, to the back of the unit here. All right, so go ahead and turn both of those on. You will you can ensure that they're on by seeing the lights on and the fans, you'll hear the fans kick on. Um, but you need, want to make sure that that's done. And then the third step we're going to do is we're going to go through here. We're going to check every knob on our appliances and make sure it's in the off position. Don't want any knobs on. See all of these are in the off position. Because if a knob is on, then the gas is flowing and causes the potential for bad stuff to happen. Alright. See that knob is on. Now this here is a manual pilot light. So with that You'll need to have make sure that this little red dot here is lined up with the off when you first turn the gas on. All right, and I'll show you that toward the end of the video. Like I said, I already have the pilot lights pre lit, so for the time being, it is on. Once you've done that, now you're ready to go out onto the porch and turn on your gas system. So you're going to do that simply come here, take this valve, turn it all the way open it all the way up once it is open let's go over here to the other tank since I'm utilizing that one for the system today so you're going to turn this valve all the way completely open that valve up all right once you've done that then you're going to come down here to this blue valve and you're going to turn it to the on position so again, in line is open, not in line is closed, all right? When you do this, when you first turn this valve on, you wanna come here, you can see where it says vent on the back side here. Kinda of listen, see if you hear any hissing sound here, or if you can smell an abnormal amount of propane there. If you can, shut that valve back off. You potentially have a damaged regulator and you'll need to have that serviced, checked out by a licensed professional to make sure that it is in proper working condition, all right? So, but if you don't, everything checks out with it, now you're ready to go to the next step, turn this valve on or open. When you do that, you'll hear an initial whoosh of gas come through here. Beyond that, you should not hear gas continuously flowing through here, okay? If you do, turn this back off immediately, Con Go back inside the unit, check, make sure all your knobs are off. If everything is off, leave that shut off, contact your local gas company, have them come out and service the unit. If not, turn off any valves that are on still. It's possible that you can bump into one as you're checking the others, you know, turning one back on. So, but if everything is off, you turn this on, you hear a continuous flow of gas running there, then shut this back off, contact your local gas company, have them come and service the unit. You potentially, most likely, have a leak somewhere. The other possibility is if you adjust any of your pilot lights and you open them up to where they're flowing heavier, that could be what's causing it as well. So you'll want to go through and just check everything, but 
you have gas flowing somewhere that should not be flowing at the rate that it is, all right? Um, as you can see here, the gas line does run through the floor and along the bottom of the unit, the underside of the unit. So the issue there is, is during transit, there's the potential for road debris, whether it be rocks, chunks of rubber, pieces of wood, whatever, kick up off the road, hit the gas line, cause damage to it, and that could be your leak. So we don't want to operate this system with any leaks as it is could pose a very potentially dangerous situation. Highly potentially dangerous situation. I'll get my wording right maybe here in a minute. All right, we've turned our gas on. As you can see, this valve here is in open position. I have this hose running down to our tank here. So we are ready to go inside and light all of our pilot lights on our appliances. All right. First one we're gonna do this is the Royal 50 pound fryer. I'm gonna light this one first. And the way you're gonna do this is on this knob, you'll notice it says off, pilot, and on. So when you come and ready, get ready to light this, it would be in the off position. You're gonna turn it to the pilot position here. So the L on the word pilot is lined up with that red dot. All right, you're gonna press and hold. And this may take 30 seconds to a minute before you get enough gas. This is a two hand operation here. While you're holding that in, you're gonna take a barbecue stick lighter and you're gonna reach right up here and you're gonna light right there at that pilot light where you see the flames at now, okay? Once that lights, Continue to keep the button depressed for about another 15 seconds usually is what it takes. And then you'll slowly release this button. Once you do that and the pilot light stays lit, as you see there, then you're simply gonna turn this to the on position. All right, your pilot will stay lit, you're good to go. So now I'm gonna demonstrate the gas working on this unit. See we have a good flow. Alright. Sorry to be so repetitive but cannot emphasize enough. We need to make treat this as safely as possible here. Alright. So with the 24 inch royal griddle here to light it you're simply going to look down underneath and right here you see the gas lines here and here so if you follow those back you can see the pilot light just going to stick your barbecue lighter up there light that one and then same thing over here to light that one all right i'll demonstrate these working See that one lit. Go over here. You can see that one. Lit. All right. Here we have the 36 inch char roller from Royal. A couple of ways to light this one you can reach underneath. You see the pilot lights there, and then one there. So you can simply just stick your barbecue stick lighter right straight through. That's about the easiest way to light these. Sorry for the shoddy camera work. And as those are, you can see those burning there. And then the third one over here. Burning as well. We'll demonstrate these working. the Asper six burner and oven combination here. 
So with these, again, easy to light. You see the here, finally like there. So just take your stick burner straight back to each and every one. Sorry, I know I get a little monotone here with these videos sometimes. Bueller, Bueller. All right, there's that. Demonstrate these burners working. All right, now for the oven, it does take a, it require two hands to light the oven. But you're simply gonna come down here, push this button in, Hold it, stick your stick lighter through this hole here, just to the right of that button. Insert your stick lighter there. A little bit back. You should be able to see the blue flame inside there. To light that pilot light. Go ahead and try to show you the oven working here. You see the blue flame there. Alright. Pretty simple. Uh, the Asber oven, the Royal 36 inch charb roller, and the Royal 24 inch griddle are all free flowing pilots, which means there's no manual on off button like there is on the fryer. There's gas coming out of those the moment you open the gas valve outside the trailer there. So just be aware of that anytime you're operating the unit here. All right. Now this thing that you hear chirping on the wall over here, this is the carbon monoxide alarm and the explosive gas alarm. So you see the zero there, that means it's not detecting any gas in the air. And then the LB that is flashing there, that means, simply means low battery, because the battery's not in it, it's right there. It plugs in underneath this little back cover here. You can put the battery in, it goes on this side. And then there's a cord here wrapped up underneath this. And it goes to this plug. It is attached already. So you can mount this unit on the wall anywhere. You can mount it over on this side, wherever you'd like. I just like to demonstrate it and make sure that you understand that there is a battery there for it. That battery will be dead by the time you get to take possession of the unit if I haven't been there. So I will leave this battery and book up here at the front on the counter. Next thing I want to talk about, these are the charcoal briquettes for the char roller. All right. Since I have the gas running on that and demonstrating, I take those out because they are in a plastic bag and don't want to melt that all over the char roller there. All right. Here's the grease trap for the griddle. Baskets are in the fryer here. So let's talk about this hood for a minute. All right, this grease hood here, it is a 12 foot long grease hood on this unit. Once a week, you'll need to pull these filters out. Do that by lifting, rock it toward you, and then drop it down. And then to put it back in, simply slot it in at the top here, push the bottom in, set it down on top of there. All right. Once you do that, you want to make sure that you close up your seams here as tight as possible so that no objects can get sucked into the fan and potentially damage the fan, either one of the two fans on the unit. All right, 
you will need to remove those once a week. Wash them with soap and warm water. Get them good and clean. Help keep the grease build up from becoming too great. That way it doesn't cause a fire, a grease fire in the hood there. Okay. Uh, minimum once a week for cleaning those. And then you see the grease rail here mounted on the wall, running down below the filters there. So that grease rail drains down to the end here. In behind this piece of paper that says attention, there is a grease cup that sits right here and they'll catch all that grease. We do recommend that you clean that much more frequently, maybe every day that you use the unit. And then the grease rail, you can clean it with the filters each time you clean those, all right? This unit is equipped with a fire suppression system. You see that at the top of the oven here. And then each appliance, the charb roller has two drops for it. The griddle has one there and then the fryer has one here. All right. The tank for the fire suppression system is up here in the front corner in the Vino's. You see it there, you see lines running into the hood. And then back here at the back by the door, this is the control head for the fire suppression system. So if you needed to manually discharge this system, you do it operating like, kind of like a uh, fire extinguisher. Grab the pin here, give a good firm pull, breaking the tab there, and then flip this switch to the left, and this will go from set to fired. At that point, you're gonna wanna exit the unit. If the system discharges while you're inside here, exit as quickly as possible. You don't wanna hang out in here for that, all right? All right, with, included with the fire suppression system, there are two extinguishers. I have a class, an ABC extinguisher and then a class K extinguisher. The class K extinguisher is required in every commercial kitchen in all 50 states. So we provide that along with the ABC extinguisher as part of the fire suppression package. And then you see the three bay sink here at the front. Hand wash station over here. Shelf in the V nodes. All right. Demonstrate the water here. Hot and cold there. So anytime you turn on the water, you're going to want to turn this switch on. That is the water pump switch. Come over here. Cold water side. And I'm going to get a reading on the hot water side here. For you. is what we'd like to see and the water heater has multiple settings so you can set it to max which is going to be over 125 you can see this one's already up to 124 125 there so we're good on the temp there 125 it's a little hot most codes departments do require anywhere from 115 to 120 120 seems to be the popular number so i just like to demonstrate that, it can, that the water heater is functioning properly down here we have Two cabinets and just look into the vinos there. See the water heater over there. See the mop sink, water draining into it. And then again. Alright. Moving on around. Over here we have the 18 by 48 stainless steel work table with under galvanized undershelf right below the concession window and then over here we have the 24 by 48 stainless steel work table with galvanized undershelf as well next to that table we have the arctic air commercial refrigerator 
let's show you that it is functioning. It's sitting at 33 degrees currently. This bag here, we put it in here in the refrigerator just for storage purposes. It goes with the fryer. It's legs for the fryer, but we have it on mounted on legs now. And then inside this manual here, you see the key, set of keys here. That set of keys goes to this lock here so that you can lock the door to keep it from opening. And then here next to the refrigerator, we have the Asper freezer. Setting at a nice cool negative seven degrees. Ooh, that feels so good right now. Let's give you a look inside it. This unit does come with the rubber coin flooring throughout. LED light in the front. One in the middle, one in the back. And it also has a heat and air unit. It is a 15,000 BTU heat and air unit. So these knobs here, this knob is high cool, low cool, high heat, low heat, high fan, low fan. This knob here is your temperature knob, hot or cold temps. And then this switch and this switch are directional switches. So if you flip this one off, no air will blow out the back and then if you flip this one off no air would blow out here so you can have air blowing only to the front and none coming out the back both of them open vice versa whatever that is completely up to you dealer's choice on that i would recommend with the air conditioning being right here next to this exhaust hood any air coming out of the back side here is just going to get sucked right into the hood vented right back out of the unit so you may want to shut this end off open up this front end and have air blowing into the v-nose to circulate back through at that point all right all right let's talk shutdown procedures here so when shutting the unit down the gas is going to be the first thing you're going to want to shut down that's pretty much just reverse order of how you started it up so you're going to come through here again, you're going to check to make sure all of your knobs are in the off position. Just verify that everything is turned off. And then you're going to come down here for your one manual knob on the fryer. Make sure that's in the off position. And then you're going to turn this one back to pilot. When you get to pilot, push in and turn again and turn it to the off position there. All right, and as you can see there, our pilot light is now turned off. Once you've done that, remember the pilot lights on the griddle, the char roller, and the oven will remain lit until we turn the gas valve off. So once you've done that, now you're ready to go back out. Come here, close that valve, and then Come to your tank, turn this gas off here. I'm gonna go down here to my big tank. Close that. All right, now that we know all the gas is shut off to the unit, now we're just gonna watch for our pilot lights to burn out completely here. And once they've gone out, then at that point we can proceed shutting down the unit there. So we're just verifying that all of our pilot lights have gone out. Those are out. Over here. That one's out. That one is out. And just for good measure, let's check this one again. It's off. In the off position. We are good. So there. At that point, now you know for certain there is no gas flowing through the system, and you can come over and you can turn off your exhaust hood now at this point. All right.
Exhaust heads off, lights are off. So you can continue with your cleanup for the unit. One other detail I do want to go over is with the water heater. Before plugging in the water heater at the start of the day, you want to come here, turn on the hot water side, make sure it's not speeding and sputtering. You have a good constant flow of water like you see here. That tells you that your water heater is full. And at that point, it's now safe to plug the water heater in and set your temperature to your desired, or set the dial to the desired temperature, okay? If you don't, in the water, if you plug the water heater in without ensuring it's full and it's not does not have water in it or has very little water in it, you risk burning up the element in the water heater and thus incurring expenses that you probably don't want to incur. So I just like to make everybody, everyone aware of that, let you know up front, that's a good practice. Just end of the day, unplug your water heater when you're completely done, and then make sure that you have a constant flow of water through the hot water side before plugging the water heater in for the day. All right. And I don't have a tester here, so we'll just take this and go around and plug it in to all the outlets. See, that's on. See that one's working. We have an outlet back here at the back. You see that one's working. And then there is one more outlet that's behind the refrigerator and the freezer that those are both plugged into. Obviously, those are both working to be at 33 and negative 7 degrees. So, all right. The last thing we're going to go over today, right here next to the exit door, above the control head, you'll see this sign. So this has safety guidelines and procedures for the concession trailer, startup procedures, shutdown procedures, and before transit checks. So startup procedures and shutdown procedures mainly is going to go over gas, and then before transit, you're going to want to make sure that you check the tire pressure, check all your lug nuts, make sure they're tight like they should be. Uh, store, make sure any hoses or the power cord for the unit, all of that, those such items are stowed away. Um, and gates are shut, doors are locked, shut, concession window is shut, things of that sort. All right. So that concludes the instructional video for this unit. Hope you enjoy the unit. We appreciate your business here at SLE. Thank you very much. Have a great day.